Hello, Scorpio. It's, this reading could, could resonate with anyone who has Scorpio strongly in their chart, Sun, Moon, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Um, I am going to bring out a general reading out on the table now, and this reading will then move into an extended reading where I will take the information and move it. So let's go ahead and get started, Scorpio, this morning. starting off in the energy of the five of pentacles so that um that is the energy that you uh are in or or will be in let's see if we if we're shown any other energy here justice boom taking care of business my friends taking care of business all right let's see what we've got here let's see what we've got here Emperor flips over, doesn't come out. All right. What is this one? Seven of Swords. I don't know. It just felt funny in my fingers. out with some force by the cups all right three more and then we'll get these all situated One more. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's see what we let's see what we've been given. Starting off with a five of pentacles. Or to, already knew that that was on the docket here. Then justice follows, which is really nice to see. Two of swords. The moon. Lover's energy, five of cups, the fool. Eight of cups, seven of cups, the wheel. All right, who do I see here? I see the energy of Libra. I see Pisces. I see Gemini. I see these types of traits here, these types of personalities here. You're coming into this period of time, Scorpio, in, you know, feeling some sort of pain. Five of Pentacles, I mean, you know, usually it does affect your finances. It affects your stability in your life. It could have you know, impacts on your friendships in your life. But when you're in the five of pentacles, like this is not a situation that feels good. You know, this feels, this feels bad. And when you're in the five of cup, I mean, what, is there a five of cups here? No. When you're in the five of pentacles, uh, you really, you really are struggling with the feelings of um, what could happen in the future. You're right. You're not just feeling the pain of the moment, but you, you are concerned with, if, if today feels like this, how is tomorrow going to feel? 
right? What's the situation going to be tomorrow if the situation is like this today? And ultimately, the Five of Pentacles urgency that we have when we're in the Five of Pentacles, eventually we get to the point where we don't care about certain things, right? That's how we move into the Six of Pentacles. We, uh, we survive and we survive by overcoming in our life, whatever it is, like overcoming our fear of judgment, overcoming some sort of um, pride that we have, like with the five of pentacles, it's a tough, it's a tough place to be here, though, um, we see that you've been making some some pretty big changes in your life, Scorpio, because we have you in the recent energy, you're probably still sort of in this energy, Scorpio, of moving away from a situation which was a lover's energy, Scorpio, of moving away from a situation, whether it was a job, whether it was a um whether it was a relationship, a certain kind of business relationship with with a client that um, started off to be really powerful and really beautiful, but ended or, or got to be a very unhealthy kind of way, uh, a relationship. It could be with, you know, a relationship you have a, with a client. It could be with a lover. It could be with a sibling. You can get in this sort of intensity. Um, the lover's energy is something that is a dynamic kind of uh, of dance that you experience with, with another person. It's usually with other people that we can get in these types of, um, like tornado, tornado energies, because there are energy vortexes. It feels to me like when I am in a situation like this, it almost takes on its own kind of energy, almost like it, there's an energy vortex or an inverted energy vortex that comes down over the top of both of you. And it, in, in a way, that's why the lover's energy can turn into the devil energy because of it, it almost takes on its own energy in an order to kind of clear that energy away it must like spiral out of control in some way it has to kind of come to a complete stop it's not that this these types of relations can't be maintained they can they can be ma maintained it just takes knowledge of how the two of you work together how you function together how you communicate together how you keep your own individual preferences strong within you you know there's ways to manage this type of relationship but sometimes um it's not really in sometimes these relationships that we're in are, are created through a need that we have a need for success or a need for financial income, a need for some sort of improvement in our lives. A lot of times a lover's energy. Now this is only in my own experience. So I'm just saying from my own experience, that's how my work is. It's from my own experience. It's from my life. That's why, you know, that's, that's the knowledge I bring into this base, you know, mixed with, mixed with, you know, the, the energy that runs through me that I connect with. But, um, from, for the most part, from my perspective, the lover's energy is, is mostly connected to from a place of wanting something incredible to be there, wanting something incredible to happen as far as love or money or even the experiences that we would like to have in life. And usually when we get in these sorts of, sorts of situations, there are wounds within us, lack, wounds that create a lack, which drive the need, which, which fuels the flames, right, of whatever is, is happening here between these two people. Now, it's not always like that, but usually with the lover's energy, there is a real reason why you're pulled together. And some of it is really profound and important for, for life, right? So the lover's energy is such a beautiful quality, such a beautiful experience we can have um, on this earth, but sometimes it can turn toxic. Sometimes these people are pulled together by work situations or by some sort of instant attraction that they have for each other. And as you get into that energy, as it starts to swirl around and become pervasive, per pervasive and controlling within each of your spheres, the, that relationship can really become very toxic. And, you know, it, there, there is, there are tower moments and there are major changes that come in at that point. We see you, Scorpio, having gone through something like that. Clearly you have gone through something like that and it left you in a place, um, of, of devastation, whether it's socially, financially, you know, whatever it is, it has left you quite alone, 
on the fringe of something, on the edge, on the edge of financial disaster, on the edge of your society, on the edge of your friend group, on the edge of your class, whatever it is, it's left you somehow hanging on some sort of an edge. That's, you know, that's how it feels in the five, in the five of pentacles and the eight of cups. It's not all about the material world. There's some heartbreak here. There's some real heartbreak here. There is some time spent. There are emotions spent, right? There, there are a lot, there has been a lot of energy, emotional energy, effort and participation and opening up the heart and being willing to doing something, right? What I, you know, with the eight of cups, I'm, I'm going to spend a little, a couple more minutes here, Scorpio. So fast forward if you, don't want to hear this anymore, but some people can heal from hearing this. So if it's annoying, because I know this is painful. So if you don't need to hear it, just fast forward, give me a couple minutes and I'll be talking about this over here. Um, when you have gone through the eight of cups and have put your time, your attention, your heart, your willingness. Okay. I'm back on that string. Now that thread, um, there is something happening there. There is something that happens to the willing heart to the willing heart that gets destroyed. And that's often what happens with the eight of cups. When you're willing and your heart is in it and you trust it and you're doing something because you're there for some sort of completion of something, you're there to better your life, right? You're there to have a beautiful experience and you're doing what you can willingly and with a with an appreciative and, and grateful space within you, you're there participating, put, putting your all into it, right? This is for me when I'm in the eight of cups, this is what has in my past been, has been damaging with the eight of cups. And what happens slowly over time is your heart breaks because you realize that there's something going on where you are contributing, you are giving all of yourself and that's not being reciprocated. So that's not happening with the other person in one way, shape, or form. And in that process, there is a slow disintegration of the heart center, of the willingness. And when the soul loses the willingness, when the heart slowly dies, there is a slow, sad, painful death that goes on within the heart and the soul and the body and the mind of the giver who has given but has not received. Okay, and I know that sounds dramatic, but there is a real emotional depth to that kind of wound that comes from something so strong. Because we have to remember the lover's energy is a strong energy. It will it will send, I don't know quite how this works, but it feels to me like um, if you get into a lover's energy, that puts that that puts a pleasure strike, um, a pleasure strike in the mind. And it goes far into the mind. It's a very special place to be able to go. It's a very special kind of pleasure. And we have to remember, um, the, 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 um, if, if you dangle a pendant from a chain and allow it to move to and fro, back and forth on a chain, that when you're in the lover's energy, you will often go far to one side in pleasure. And usually to clear out that kind of an energy, you will then have to go far to the other side, that same dimension for the pain of it. That is my understanding of pretty much anything that we go through in life, that if we're going to be balanced and if we're going to reach enlightenment and move from this planet with a cleansed spirit, with a cleansed body of energy, that we will come full spectrum on that pendant swing in our lives. So if you have been through this track where you swing over into the pleasure of the lovers, and now you've swung over into the pain of the lovers, you have then balanced that energy and that gives your spiritual team and your body and how the body works a, a place and a moment and a period of time to cleanse out from, you know, I'm not a doctor, but this is, I don't, from the body, however you believe it, cleanse out through the gland system, through your saliva, through your urine and your feces and all of that, you can clear out some of that old emotional pain because you have balanced that energy 
you have felt the, you know, you have gone full spectrum and then you can move forward in life when you balance it out. And so I like this. If you've gotten to the point now, Scorpio, where you're able then to move forward into the victory energy, make some important changes in life, go through that emotional pain because it looks like you have been or you are going through some emotional pain here of separating from this experience, separating from the the depth of the loss of it, and then also having to make some pretty severe changes in life that have sent you into the five of pentacles. So the eight of cups, it, it really um, forces you to go through some pretty deep emotional waves. The ego takes a, a big hit in the, in the eight of cups and your pocketbook oftentimes not always, because sometimes we can leave, for example, one job and move to another job and have a new set of experiences there for us that are better. So it's not always that you move out of the Eight of Cups with the Five of Pentacles, but it, it oftentimes it comes with the Eight of Cups is this feeling of the Five of Pentacles. Am I going to be accepted? And am I, go am I going to make it through financially? Am I going to find um, my 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 footing again? Am I going to ever feel good about myself again? <clears throat> Am I ever going to be able to speak, you know, again in 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 a way that I feel like I'm connecting with just normal people, right? Because when you're in this kind of energy, you really do feel disconnected, not only from the people that you go through this experience with, but you feel disconnected from other people. Uh, you, you know, like you've just gone through something pretty pretty difficult here and you have this new understanding that's sort of becoming a part of your thinking and when you go through this sort of experience you do um you do feel disconnected from average people not average people from people just living their lives and their lives don't really at the time contain these elements. And so you go through this difficult experience. And yet a lot of the time it's really hard to talk about it because you find yourself talking to people who look at you um, with the desire to understand, but perhaps the inability to comprehend the emotional depth that it takes to even talk about something like this. So not only are you, um, feeling grief for your, the past, the time, the amount of time you spent, but you're feeling the pain of some sort of real loss in your life, whether it's home or money or friends or whatever it is. And yet it's difficult to even talk about it sometimes. So this can be a rough, a rough place to be, but we see this beautiful justice energy here. So something here, Scorpio has happened now that you're starting to see some things become much more fair for you with the justice energy. You have walked away and you have started to see and feel and experience life around you becoming more satisfying, more what it should be, right? It's not that you are winning anything at this point in time, right? It's not like you are going right. Yeah, you're not celebrating, you know, um, you are starting to see the benefits of the changes that you've made. Because even though your heart might still be heavy, right? And and you could still be questioning and asking those questions of why and how and what's going to happen now. There is something quite satisfying to start to see um, improvements in life. I have been through this before and I can, I can say now so very honestly that there's nothing that can, let me say this, it's so silly. It's not totally true, but I have to say it because I feel it right now. There's nothing that can break a broken heart and a scared person. There's nothing that can heal a broken, <laughs> this is welcome to my spiritual team. <laughs> there are a bunch of jokes here, Scorpio, I have to tell you. <laughs> Um, there's nothing that can heal a broken heart more than a, and, and a broken bank account more than a nice paycheck coming in. I'm telling you when we're down and out like this, safety and security is so vital for us. And so I have to say here that you have some safety and security that is, um, that is starting to appear around you in your environment for you to start to feel the justice happening, starting to feel satisfaction, starting to feel like the situation isn't all um, going the other way for you. You're starting to see some things happening now that are in your benefit and it feels good. 
It feels good. Now, I would say, Scorpio, now the energy is picking up. So while you were in this slower, like very dense energy in the recent past and maybe even into the very beginning of May, this energy for you is going to start to pick up and feel lighter and faster moving as you move through. the. So the time might feel really long here. But I promise you, this month is going to fly by the fast, you know, as you get towards the end of the month, I would have to say the faster it's going to go. And by the time you get to the end of May, uh, you have something really exciting here. I just noticed because you have the Wheel of Fortune, the Fool and the Two of Cups. So you have some really good energy here that's coming in into your um, future horizon, but it's it's like the next morning horizon, not horizon, like out into the horizon of the future two or three years ago, two or three. <laughs> Scorpio, I'm working with my team on controlling energy, I have to say. So I'm right now working on controlling my energy, controlling that energy that flows through, a throat, that flows through all of us and through life, we have to learn how to control that energy that flows through us so that we don't say things, um, especially somebody like me or, or whoever has any kind of a public platform that we speak just out of our heart centers. That's a scary thing in this day and age, right? And so one of the things I'm working on with my spiritual team is to take the energy that flows through me to be authentic in it, but to be very careful with the words that I say, not to be unauthentic with my energy, but to be careful in how I say things. So number one, so I'm not repeating, eternally repeating. You guys know that I have been a repeater in my work, right? So I am working on that. I am working with my team on that. And it's funny because I think that what's happening is uh, um, I'm going through my own training as I'm doing these readings on how to become a better speaker um, and flow these kinds of messages so that I am controlling my ego while I'm doing it, that I'm not getting, getting carried away um, in the exuberance of the energy so that I can just control it more. And so you will hear these funny little words coming out. Now, I've heard it now three times where I've said it now completely opposite from what the energy was itself. So I'm just going to continue on in this reading. It was a break, so I apologize for the break here, um, but maybe it was necessary. Maybe it was a necessary break. Okay, I'm back in the back, back in that energy now. Scorpio. And it feels to me like you have, uh, you have gone through the five of cups. Five of cups is this emotional energy that we have here. You know, I don't want to spend too much time on the five of cups because it blends in here with the eight of cups and the five of cups. It, the five of cups will for a short time, Scorpio probably will want to come in and affect your decisions, affect how you feel about your future. The Five of Cups can do that. It can leave little tentacles wrapped around our ankles and wrapped around our wrists and wrapped around our heart centers. It can leave little tentacles that can sort of come in and influence uh, influence us sometimes. And that's a tool, a resource, a protective aspect of what our um, what our emotions, um, our emotional body can do for us, whether it's good or bad, usually with the five of cups, those tentacles do seem to oppress and to slow down. Sometimes it's a good thing if, you know, let's say there's another one of these feelings that come up, another one of these experiences that come up, those tentacles can really put the brakes on for you and can kind of hold you back. But most of the time, those kinds of emotional tentacles that can wrap around our ankles and through our hearts and wrap around our vocal cords so that you know, we sometimes we say things in, in a way that later we wish we wouldn't have. Shoot, that was because of that other guy. It wasn't this guy's fault. That other guy did that to me. Why did I, you know, that's what the five of cups can do. It can, it can delay responses. It can delay emotional responses, right? So like, let's say some guy two years ago, um, sold us something, you know, and we, we can't, and they did, uh, somebody did something to us. It doesn't have to be a guy. Somebody did something to us two years ago, and that was really hard on us. And maybe we lost money from it. Maybe something we had to go to court because of it or something. And you haven't forgotten that you haven't really processed it through. And it, and it does have its tentacles on you. And maybe it's good that it does. Right. But let's say you go to buy something else two years, you know, now, two years later, and you start getting a weird feeling. Is it going to happen again? What's going on? How come I'm nervous? How come I'm really anxious about this? Um, I, my tone is weird. I'm not able to negotiate as well. I can't get that real casual. I don't care about this. I can say no to this. No big deal. All right. That's all right. I'll, no, thanks. 
You know, it's kind of hard to have that casual, you know, negotiation energy when you still have the five of cup tentacles on you from the last time you had a, a deal and it went bad and it escalates the energy. So it escalates your frequency when you go to have another occasion. So that's how the five of cups can start to weave itself into your future life. Now, we see it here and I'm glad it's here because it tells me that you are in the middle of doing some sort of emotional processing. Not only are you doing some emotional processing, but I think you're finding a lot of clarity from, I feel, um, how you move forward here with your friends, uh, with your career, with your relationship and, and romantic pursuits could be even because we have a two of cups here, but it's really, how am I going to get along with other people? How am I going to get along with another lover? How am I going to get along with another business par partner as I move forward into the future? Because for, for so many of us, Scorpio, like we don't want to be alone. Who wants to truly, who wants to be alone? I think some of us really do. I, I, and I even think from COVID and from um, all of the changes in the past year and a half, I think a lot of us have found out that we actually don't mind being alone a little bit more than we thought we did. But ultimately, you know, um, one of the things I prayed to my team when I first started going through my awakening was, and I really felt this, I felt like, God, don't let me be alone when I die. And I kept hearing, you won't be alone. We'll be here with you. We'll be here with you. Right. And I thought that's a beautiful thing to, to know that we, no matter what our earthly situation is, we will not die alone. You know, and I remember going through that process of just being afraid for my family and friends. Am I too different? Am I too something? Whatever my weaknesses are, are my weaknesses too much for the people around me? You know, we go through, you know, there's something like that here. Maybe it's not that dramatic, but I do feel there's something like that here because you have the two of swords connected to your friends and family with the moon connected in. So, you know, I mean, I think that you're trying to figure out how do I move forward and make sure I keep my relationships safe, right? I don't really know what I'm going to be doing in the future and I don't really know what's going to be happening to me, but I know that I don't want to lose my, my support group. I know that I don't want to lose those friends and those people around me that I've had in my life. Like I treasure it's, there is like a treasuring of a realization of the importance of someone here in your life, whether it is your friends and family or coworkers or, or other people who are around you that have the same heart connection. Right, because sometimes the three of cups are co-workers where in the evenings you don't really think about it, but maybe there's a big conference coming up and you, you know, you need to get back on track and you need to, there's something big that you're working with other people on and there's goals and you all have goals and you're all committed to it and you're, you're emotionally committed to it too. Like you, you know, so th there is something here that's connecting you to the people and the situations that are around you. And I, and I think you are spending some time like, okay, um, you know, now that I have this understanding, now that I realize some of these important things, um, you're really going through, through a process here of of trying to decide maybe the, the, the seven of cups is here. So you have a lot of little decisions. I think that you're making throughout and we see the seven of cups ride up over the five of cups and the three of cups, right? There's a lot of emotional stuff that you're working on. And this totally fits in, um, with now I'm realizing like this, this is Scorpio. Don't forget this is Scorpio. <laughs> um, seven of cups riding up over this three of cups and the five of cups into the two of swords. So I, I think that you are being very rational and calm, um, but but being very connected into the emotional core of who you are, being connected into the wounding that you're still healing from, and, and then being connected into the people um, who are around you, who you are interlocked with, keeping those people in mind too. And there's some sort of decision that you're working on here. I, I really... Um, it's almost like you're just trying to figure, I, Scorpio, there's some sort of information. I feel like there's some sort of news or some sort of information that you're working to 
somehow get out here because you have this three of cups here with the moon there you might be about to start something that could make people rather nervous um, these kinds of changes are important to go through and they do leave you in a in a weakened state um, but but it is in a weakened state to rise up and do something very important do something very strong that's what these experiences teach us they're empowering they are meant to be empowering journeys where you learn how to stand up for yourself you learn how to take care of yourself you learn that your own mind and your own spiritual team is so very valuable to your own growth pretty soon if you get in the lover's energy and it's unhealthy you're going to start listening to the other person their spiritual team their inner voice right what happens to your spiritual team and your inner voice you're blocking off a whole team of people a whole team of people a whole um You're blocking off your own team and saying in favor of my own voice and my own inner guidance and my own intelligence and my own spiritual team. I'm going to listen to you because your voice is better. Your mind is better. Your team is better than mine. And when you go through this kind of experience, you learn that is a bunch of bullshit. That is bullshit because you make the best decision for yourself. And these are the kinds of lessons that you learn. Look at the strength that you have now. Look at this knowledge you have. Look at the awareness you have. But there's something here to, to announce or to reveal. And I think whatever it is, I feel like it does make people just a little bit nervous because look, they're looking into the moon. There could be some sort of a timing thing here as well. Right. There could be some sort of a timing. Maybe there's some sort of a, a special moon. We just got done with the pink with a pink moon. Now, um, I don't know a whole lot about what the pink moon is. I think it's super interesting. Um, and I think the moon is, is a very powerful um, supplement to the earth. It's so very powerful. It's not a supplement, but it's it doesn't matter. I'm not going to talk about the moon. I don't know anything about the moon. So here we go. Training of the reader. Training of the reader. See how my mind can take that energy and twist it and make it my own as I start talking about the moon. But now here was, I'm back in the energy again. Now look at the two white, the, the white dog or the white wolf and the, and the black dog or the black wolf here, um, going at the moon. So it's, it's interesting that I then noticed that. So spirit does use our mind to help us learn. Um, but we, I think a lot of us now are going through our own training programs to train ourselves to use that life force energy with us in the most appropriate way for our own ascension, for our own empowerment. And what I've learned in the Kundalini Scorpio is that it, it, yes, it is for healing, but more than anything, it's for pure strengthening and empowering. Is for strengthening and it's strengthening and empowering, and the cleansing of the emotions um, comes first, and then the empowerment and the strengthening comes after that. Almost like going into basic training in the military, they take you all the way down in your ego, and then they build you up. Now, this is not the military; something completely different, but the same kind of um, training training process, I would have to say. So there is that kind of energy here. You're like, all right, how do I do this? What should I do? Seven of Cups, it's going to have an emotional basis, but you're using logic. It's perfect. That's perfect, Scorpio. That's, that's perfect in what you want to do. Well done. And I think that you are very considerate of these people and these situations around. You value them. And because you value these people, they also value you. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a same energy, just like an energy of wounding and stuff like that. You can have good energy that you connect with in other people too. Energy of empowerment, energy of, um, goal completion, whatever it is that you have here, energy of the family, you can connect in very powerful ways in, um, high level energy magnetism. Let's just call it that. So Scorpio, I would say by the end of May, there is something new happening here for you. There's something new, whether it's a new relationship, because you have the two of cups here. Um, you have the fool with the wheel of fortune. So, but you start, you you start off in this energy of the seven of cups, which is about, okay, how exactly do I do this? How exactly do I do this? I think you're connecting in with this new beginning in this justice energy. 
I think there was something here that helped you to pull out of this situation, whether it was a new job, um, a friendship that helped pull you out, uh, maybe a group of friends that helped pull you out. It could be another relationship coming in and was help, helped you make the transition. Uh, our spiritual teams do help us do that, right? They do help us if we are in situations where we need help in an authentic way, because our spiritual teams, they tell our truth from our energy, not from what our ego says, not from what our brain says, but from what our energy says in our body. And it's taken me a long time to realize that that's how our spiritual teams, that's how we connect into the vortex, not by the mind, but by our body's responses. And that's why it's so important to heal and to express our emotions when we go through them, just like you're doing, so that we can keep our energy grid clean, so that we can connect in um, energetically to those things that that are that we are being pulled to. Our teams want us to be energetically clean as well. That's sometimes why they put us through these things. Um, there's something here that you are starting. And I, again, I feel like it, this beginning already sort of happened already for many of you, justice energy was something that came in. Maybe you did it. You could have made the contact or you could have started the process of the justice energy, but there's something here that's in a way like pull, helping to, to bring you up out of this trench and move you forward onto a new path. And Luckily, this path is not yet in a trench, thank goodness, because we don't like those anymore, right? This is something that um, is fresh and new. It feels good. It's worth the risk. It has some sort of partnership energy here, which is really beautiful. Um, you start to see these colors changing now. If you look over here, it's all very, you know, except for this lover's energy. See the color here? Boy, that can be so attractive, that color um, but you see these colors here are mostly blues and blacks. And, you know, this is more dynamic too. But if you move over to this side, all of a sudden you start to see all these new colors coming in, all these new opportunities here, all these new fun and delicious flavors that are, you are connecting into. So there's something here, Scorpio, that you are already stepping into. Now, I'm not sure if you really know exactly what it is because the moon energy is here. I think that you feel pretty good about it. I think that you feel pretty good about it. And I think it is something that got you out of this situation. That's always an improvement. But just like the people around you, I think that you also realize like there is a moon element here. Not only is this something that's sort of a surprise for people and leaves people in um, somewhat of a mystery, you also are connecting in with that mystery. And Scorpio, I think you probably enjoy that mystery maybe a little bit a little bit more than the people who are around you. But you do recognize the mystery here. You do recognize that there are portions of this that just probably that haven't been revealed yet. Right? It's very Pisces type energy here with the moon. Um so yeah, you're moving into something new. Wheel of Fortune is about to turn, or it is turning. What's such a mystery about this, though, is that where are the aces? We have a fool here, but we don't have any aces. And so you must have had some sort of ace come in before. That's why, how you were able to get the judgment energy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dig um, into, into a couple of these ending energies, and then I'm going to move into the extended wheel Go ahead and go down a bunch of rabbit holes here and see what kind of information we can get for you, Scorpio. And then I'll move this forward into the end of June is where I'll move this story. But for right now, I want to go into this last row. I mean, how can I not? How could I not go into this information? So let's go ahead and dig in here just a little bit, Scorpio, um, before we're done with the, with the, with the general. Okay, what do I want to get into here? See, this is your energy. These energies at the bottom are your energies that you take on. This is always your energy that you take on. So you're taking on the wheel of fortune. So you are the wheel. You are pushing forward. You are taking in the action. You are the one in, in motion. So while this might have been something that was a nice connection for you here in the beginning, whether it was a new job or a new relationship, there's work here for you to do. I don't, there's no hesitation. I mean, I don't think that you, this is right up. This is something that feels good for you, but there is work here for you to do because this wheel of fortune is in your energy. This means you are moving forward. You are making changes. You are going through the motions. Um, the wheel of fortune is exciting. It could be very fortunate, um, but it does come with this risky feeling here with the fool. 
So let's go ahead and I'm going to go into the Wheel of Fortune first, and then I'll move up into the Fool and into the Two of Cups. I'll do all three. Maybe just one layer down. One layer down. I'll go maybe probably go deeper in the extended reading, but I'll go one layer down here. The Wheel. Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. Knight of Swords. Communication could be happening quite quickly. Let me finish here. I'll go through the whole deck, and if there's, what was this one? Five of Cups. Well, it didn't come out, and here it is. All right. Damn. Scorpio. Scorpio. Well, we have Six of Cups, Knight of Swords, Ten of Pentacles. This came out first. Doesn't always matter, but... You're moving quickly on something, Scorpio. Um, maybe it's information. <laughs> maybe it's a response. Maybe it's a decision that you're making, something that you're communicating forward, but you are moving forward. Knight of Swords is usually about information or communication, um, explanations of things, um, making a decision and then explaining the decision or carrying this decision forward and notifying people about the decision. Um, it's usually based on some sort of intelligence that you have your own mind has come up with some sort of solution or a group of people have come up with a solution or an answer or they have gotten some information. But but the, this is movement forward. Um, the Knight of Swords comes quickly. That's one thing I noticed about the Knight of Swords. When I'm in the Knight of Swords, Scor Scorpio, um, and, and usually when I'm connecting into my profession, into my skills that I have, I do get lots of urgings. Like I, I do have lots of connections to maybe information or how people feel that that can come in quite quickly for me. And I've learned how to tune that out for the most part, because I just want to be a normal person. But sometimes something very powerful can come in and I really don't have any choice, but to just communicate that, whether it's to a friend or a family or something, I just don't have a choice, but to communicate it without any thought, without any sort of, it, it just feels right and it feels like something I need to say. And in those moments, that does happen. And so sometimes um, what I'm getting at, Scorpio, is, and I don't want to, uh, I'm bringing in some new skills. So I, you're, you're hearing some sort of training here. I, I don't want to say that everything is, is, is from, my, from my own experiences. I'm just learning these these cards in my own life in a very real way. And I'm learning that the Knight of Swords can sometimes be something that you already have clarity on. You already have an understanding on, right? So when those, those thoughts come through or those urgings come through us and we already have an understanding about it, we already understand it and comprehend it, it's very easy for us to carry forward with some sort of a message or to say something um, without a whole lot of forethought to it because the understanding is already there. So that's what I'm trying to get at. It almost feels like there's not a whole lot for you to think about here. Maybe for other people, it's something that is, it's, it's maybe leaves them a little bit uncomfortable, but I feel for you, Scorpio, I just really feel like it's it's something that you aren't going to think about for a whole lot. You're going to think about how are you going to say it? How are you going to say it? What, you know, what the decisions that you've already made, they've already happened here earlier in the month. So it feels like for some of you, you could all of a sudden, you know, oh, okay. So let's, let's say there's a get together. There's a get together on Saturday and you're taking a shower Saturday morning and you say to yourself, okay, I'm not going to say anything about this. When I'm at this party, I'm going to just keep to myself. I'm not going to say anything about anything I'm doing. Nobody needs to know. Jo you know, I say to myself, Jody, don't be a big mouth. Don't be a blabber mouth. <clears throat> just keep it. You know, I, this is a, something that I do sometimes. Just keep it to yourself. You don't need to be doing that all the time. Just be a normal, regular person. That's what, you know, don't say stuff that's embarrassing. Don't embarrass yourself. Don't do anything that hurts the ego, right? And you get to the party and you're just fine. You're so cool and you're doing well. And all of a sudden, 
you get with a certain group of people where you lose your inhibitions. Maybe you've had a glass of wine or something, and all of a sudden you get with the right people, the right dynamic, and all of a sudden that mouth just starts talking, and that night of sores stop, starts a-going. And that's, I, it almost feels like you get to a moment in time, Scorpio, where you somehow, to somebody, it's like you can't, you can't, it's like, it's going, it's happening, it's happening. That's the energy. It's like, oh boy, it's happening. Whether I'm doing it or something else is doing it or I can't control it, this is happening. But what we have here is the Knight of Swords with the Six of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles. This is what I'm talking about. This is serious, beautiful shit here that you've got going on. Because the Six of Cups is talking about the depth and the depth of the soul and the beauty of connecting in that way, whether it's through DNA, uh, parents, siblings, right? Whether this Six of Cups is a long, uh, an old friend, somebody that you've known for a long, long time, and they really do mean something so very important to you, right? Um, whether this is a, a person that you've met that just connects in with you in such a beautiful way, in such a deep, caring, considerate way. The Six of Cups is always there um, as a healing energy, right? So if you have somebody who's violent or somebody who's rude or somebody who's diminishing or demeaning, that's not the Six of Cups to me. Because a Six of Cups comes with the feeling of warmth, the feeling of connection, right? Those kinds of energies, the Six of Cups. We also have the Ten of Pentacles here. So there is either an opportunity here. Um, there is either an opportunity here that has so much expansion and so much room to grow. There could be a large family here. Um, okay, folks, I've been trying to ignore it, but there is a wood woodpecker outside pecking on my house. Do you hear it? Okay, right outside my room. I, I have a whole house that can go anywhere at once. And it's out here on the wall right out here, pecking right here, three feet from the microphone. So if you have some sort of woodpeckers as messengers, there are some messages coming in. <laughs> I don't know what it looks like because I can't see through my wall, but it's definitely there. All right. The, the Ten of Pentacles is here. It just wanted to be talked about. We'll see if it comes back. The Ten of Pentacles is here. And when the Ten of Pentacles is here, um, there is safety and security here. There, there is... Um, <laughs> It's taking me off my stride. I need to pull some new cards to get back into the energy. There is safety and, and, and there is safety here. There is opportunity here. There's stability here. I don't know if this is a large company or if it's a, a group of people that has assets, um, whether it's, you know, assets in the bank or whether it's um, different ways of bringing in money. Sometimes the Ten of Pentacles could be a diverse range of income producing um companies that you have, right? The Ten of Pentacles is here. And however you connect in with the Ten of Pentacles is, is, is going to be individual for each of you, but it does bring in this gentleness in life, this um, ability to, to not worry every day, or for some of us every month, if you're going to have enough money, if, if your plan is moving along, if everything is there, like there, there's a lack of worry here. The 10 of pentacles does come in and take away a lot of pain about the fear of the future, uh, uh, discomfort in relationships. A lot of that stuff goes away when you can reach the 10 of pentacles. So there is such a beautiful opportunity here, whether this is moving forward with a business, with a relative, something that is, is so very common sense, something that you've already figured out, whether this is moving into a relationship with, with another person, um, somebody that fits with you in a very, um, a very healing, um, and very deep way. This is something that's going to bring you into the, to the frequency, the emotional space of enjoyment of life, 
um, management of income and management of resources in an abundant and positive way. Uh, any kind of worry about money or about fear of consequences of a lack of a support group, I, I feel like those concerns, um, they, they don't hold a whole lot of, those concerns aren't really a part of this future or a part of this situation. Now we have to remember the fool energy is here. So the fool energy talks about just starting into this, just starting, you know, you're just starting here. Um, you, you haven't hit the four of wands yet. You haven't hit the three of pentacles yet. You're really just starting at this point. So we're just, we're talking here about the potential and about why the decision has been made or why the, why, why the decision, yeah, why the decision has been made, why the preferences are there, right? It's, and it's something that makes a lot of sense. The Knight of Swords is, evidence-based it's it's reality-based the knight of swords so it's something that is important to be discussed it's something that's going to it's going to happen either the end of may or the beginning of june there's going to be some sort of fast movement fast decision making fast um fast action into something new here with some sort of a partnership whether it's love or business or, or something fun. I'm not sure. It could even be something fun because it's a full energy. It has like this element of new and fresh and on the road kind of energy. So it could even be a vacation. It's just a monthly reading. So um, it, it could be something that's not extreme. It could be something that's just more, more normal. And we are going into the summer months. So that could make sense too. Um, Now, whatever it is that you're doing here is going to connect in with these people around you in kind of a mysterious way. So it is connected in to this other story. I have to say it is connected into the other story. All right, let's go into the fool. Let's see what we could get out of the fool energy. Ooh, the readings. See, when I flow like this, I can really go for a while. Six of rods. Six of rods coming out with the hanged man. So, you know, you, it's seven of cups, you know, flipping over. Now we have the seven of cups here. I think you have already decided how you're going to do this. It's part of the old story. By the time we get to, to the end of May, um, you are ready to move forward to do something that's bigger and better with the, with the six of wands. That's, you know, that's a great place to be in. That means that you have this deep passion. It means that you're, you know, ready to stand up and, and um, do something that, maybe you haven't done before or something that takes a little bit more responsibility. There's usually some sort of financial reward that comes with the six of rods. If there's not a financial reward, there certainly is an experience that th that's there for you that you are pretty excited about and really willing to step into some risk for uh, because you know of the benefits. Now you have the hangman here. So there could be a little bit of a pause here as you come up with this strategy. Um, you could be a little bit emotional in the, in the middle of me trying to figure out like, what am I, and you could fe feel a little bit like hopeless. What, what am I supposed to do? You know, and, and I would say by the end of May, um, you have a pretty good plan about what you're going to do. You could still be waiting a little bit because we do have the hanged man. This could be like a little bit of a different idea. The hanged man usually, you know, when, when we have the hanged man, there's usually something that our spiritual teams are having us wait for. Whether it's an epiphany that we're, we're supposed to be getting or some sort, sort of different perspective, we know that perspectives are so very important as we're moving forward into the frontier of our lives. Different perspectives, different ways of looking at things, different new understanding, new awareness. Awareness is a huge word. If we don't have an awareness about something, we truly don't have an awareness. And just not having an awareness can be um, so detrimental to our own future awareness is everything. And so I just feel like you have had like a lot of things opening up to you, Scorpio. Um, <clears throat> and my throat shocker keeps getting affected throughout this whole reading. So there could be a lot, this could be a lot about how you express yourself in one way or another, but I feel like you're, you, you have this new vastness to your awareness. And because of that, um, you're moving forward. And that is in a way like spurring on your forward movement here with the six of rods. So I love that energy. I'm going into the two of cups now. Let's pull a few cards, a couple, two, three cards for the two of cups to see what's here with the two of cups. Two of cups energy. Two of cups energy. Ten of rods. Page of 
Page of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles. Well, whatever the, this partnership is, I'm not sure if you are... Um, I don't know if you are banking on it or not. So I go into the Two of Cups, and what I get from the Two of Cups is the Ten of Rods, which is this energy of, of lightening your load, an energy of lightening your load, lightening your life, creating free time in your day. That's what the Ten of Rod does. It brings in free time, time that's not allocated. It was time that you gave to other people and to other adventures and to other endeavors. But when you get into the Ten of Rods and you start saying no and you start simplifying, you bring in extra time in your day. And then what you do with that extra time is, can be very delicious because now you have extra time. When have you ever had extra time? You have some extra time. And when you have extra time, that means you can have extra energy. And when you have extra energy, that means you can do new and fun things, right? So it's very interesting that we have these energies here of single individual energies with the Nine of Pentacles. And with the Page of Pentacles, it means like maybe you're only slightly interested. Maybe you're not sure if you're interested with this partnership. But I feel like you are interested in moving forward into something new. But I feel you're not quite sure about the partnership. Okay, I'm going deeper into this. Let's ask a question here. Please help us understand who generally is connected in with this partnership. Who is connected in with this partnership? We know Scorpio's here, but who else is here? Who else is here? Empress? Empress coming in like cattywampus. Empress? Magician? Knight of Rods. Well, you do have some sort of a partner here, but I'm not sure if you are trusting that person. Um, I'm not sure if you, I think that if there's a partner here, a potential partner here, I think that you recognize that they, they could be a potential partner. I think that you're willing to contribute or to step forward in this in a minor way while keeping your independence. Stepping into this in a minor way while keeping your independence, Scorpio. Who, who is connected to this partner? We have the Empress sort of in the reverse. So, um, there, there is a feminine energy here that maybe, um, you're not quite sure about with the Empress energy. Maybe, it, maybe this, person comes across as an empress person, but maybe the way they spoke and maybe the plans that they have, maybe something that they're doing is raising some red flags for you or some warning signs for you. Magician energy is here. Well, it feels like there, there is a lot of, there is a lot to be done. The magician is a hard worker. Magician is very crafty, uh, very uh, understands human nature, understands how you can, be very effective in your work if you can understand how people see things, how people respond to actions. Magician is is very hard working. I mean, any magician that's talented, you will know they have worked very hard and have been very dedicated to their craft throughout throughout their throughout their careers. You you can see that in the work that they do. That it's takes in it in immense and intense amount of time to be in the magician energy, right? 
So there is work to be done here, right? There is work to be done. Who's going to be doing it? Who's going to be doing the work? Who's going to be manifesting it? The Knight of Rods is here, and the Knight of Rods is something that comes in very quickly, very passionately, in a very excited tone, in a in like a news tone. If you listen to the news, you'll hear, and there'll be like this intense buzzing to that tone. That's the same tone. I, I call it like the um, high beta, high beta energy is what I've been calling it. It's like, to me, it's a certain brain wave state that puts you in an escalated in an escalated energy. You see it like in the financial industry, you see it with commission energy. Like if you get paid by commission, you see that. You see it on the news. You see it in preacher's voices. You hear that escalated tone. Um, you, you hear it whenever someone or is trying to persuade people. Usually you hear the escalated tone. Now you get to the masters, the masters of persuasion, and they don't use the Knight of Rods energy. The masters of persuasion use a very calm, rational, mellow energy, right? It's not a high energy like the Knight of Rods. It's very calm. It's very, it's very realistic, right? It, it makes it affordable. It makes it interesting. It makes it less scary. It makes it seem like it's okay to do it, right? If you can keep your voice um, in a very calm, and now I can't even do it for very long. It's very hard to do it. Now I'm raising my voice too, because who else does it? Tarot card readers can do it too. We can escalate our tone too, because we're wanting to connect in to the human body or the, to the human condition in a certain way. So we have a Knight of Rods here, and the Knight of Rods does oftentimes um, bring out some sort of warning sign, like why are you so? Why is this so urgent? Why are you in such a hurry? Why are you so excited? Where are your plans? Where's the money? <laughs> Who's going to do all this work? What's your job going to be? <laughs> oh, I know what my job's going to be, but what's your job going to be? Right? That's the kind of stuff you get into with the Knight of Rods energy. Now, here's the thing: the Knight of Rods can bring some really good stuff. Knight of Rods is smart, willing to step forward into new stuff, willing to be open-minded about. And how to move forward. The Knight of Rods is a great, a great business partner. If, if some of these essences that, that are connected to the King of Rods can be verified, factualized, if the Knight of Rods can, can move forward in a controlled way where this person can kind of control their energy, um, especially with you, Scorpio, if you start asking some really hard questions or some really detailed questions, it's going to be interesting to know if this person can then mirror your energy and if they can adapt their energy, if they can adapt their tone, if they can listen to what you're asking for and be willing to accommodate that, then those are all really good signs. I just feel for you, Scorpio, as you're moving into a new part of your life, um, I think that you are just being so very careful about the people um, that you connect with, the work that you're going to be doing, the relationships that you are going to be in, because this nine of pentacles is something that you really do hold to be quite valuable for you, especially because you just came from some place of devastation. So the nine of pentacles is like a dream come true. And maybe the nine of pentacles is part of the, of the power of this opportunity. Perhaps you don't yet have the nine of pentacles, but you sure want it. And you sure want to create this new, uh, this new situation, um, in with a, um, in a platform where you can keep the nine of pentacles energy, which brings you, um, unlimited amounts of income. It brings you your own choices, your own individual freedom, not saying you can't get into a relationship or be in a romantic relationship that can all happen with the nine of pentacles. Um, but, but this is the kind of space I think I, I see you in here. Um, and this effort's coming in in reverse. I think I'm questioning her just a little bit to, you know, ask her like, what is the goal? What is the goal of this? What are your hidden intentions? How does your emotional, you can't really ask the, ask these questions this way, but you could say, you know, how does your emotional being feel about this? I know what your ego feels like. I know what your learned being is saying, your brain and the learned being, everything that you were taught since you were born about the good way to be, the best way to be, the, 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 you know, the, what the learned being, but what does the inner being, how does the inner being feeling? feel because when we have the Empress in reverse, usually the inner being has some complaints or the inner being has some trickery because the inner being can be beautiful and it can be bad. 
inner being is the full, you know, the full human. And with the Empress in reverse, it feels like there could be something off with the inner being or some deeper unhappiness that the, that the ego doesn't, isn't recognizing. Not that the ego is bad, but sometimes the ego can be so strong that it doesn't pay attention to the inner being. It doesn't pay attention to the emotional being. It just goes on its path with what it should be doing and what it can do um, and doesn't check in with, with the emotional being. Like, I'm tired. I'm tired. I want, I want to feel love or whatever it's saying. Um, maybe it's not being heard by, by the person's ego. So that's what I'm getting here. Um, that's quite interesting. It, it kind of leaves you, um, at a little bit of an exciting place at the end of this reading. I, I have gone on quite long now. It's over an hour long. So I'm going to cut it off now. I'm going to take a break and I'll move into the extended and we'll dig a little bit deeper here and then we'll move forward into the end of June and see how this situation moves forward in the, in the next couple of months. All right, Scorpio, thank you all very much for being here. Um, sorry this reading was so long. This is how these monthly readings go. They just, they just move until the energy starts to slow. So thank you for your patience. Wishing you guys all the best. And I'll see you next week with um, another reading, perhaps a weekly reading. Those are shorter. And, um, um, so maybe that's what I'll do. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Thank you all very much, Scorpio. It's a pleasure and I'll see you next time. Thank you.